Today, folks, let's get into these five stocks to buy that are now justifying their values in this supposedly overvalued market. If you are not justifying your value, you get punished for it today, baby, because these earnings have actually been a lot better than I was expecting them to be. And it actually makes me very excited for the technological revolution, the future that is being set upon us that these major magnificent seven companies are building the infrastructure for, which concerns some investors because it is damn expensive. But my God, when you look at these numbers, they'll make you drill they'll make you sleep easy at night, baby. So if you are on a path to financial independence, if you damn well are willing to retire early, this is the conversation for you. So go hit that subscribe, join me on that journey, and like if you enjoy these kind of videos. Now we're gonna to touch on Alphabet that I missed from yesterday, but I really wanna get through the earnings that hit me the hardest because the largest single stock position between me and my fiance's portfolio is Meta stock. And when it dropped on earnings, I was like, my heart stuttered. I was like, oh no, they just hit like an all time high the other day and now we're crashing. What is happening to my meta stock and then i looked at the numbers i was like holy shit for a company now trading at a 30 times multiple which in the crash you might recall hit like a low pe of 12 or some sh crap it's a 555 percent a trillion and a half dollar company today baby i mean look at this 37 percent diluted earnings per share net income up 35 percent revenue 19 percent increase man when a company's generating tens of billions of dollars these are the numbers that whew, baby these will get you excited this will get you out of bed during the night right like this is like wow look at the margins here 43 percent actually increasing so why is the stock down i mean we're seeing a five percent increase year over year on their family daily active users even users are still growing on these platforms even though they've captured like one third of humanity ad impressions you know they're up seven percent year over year meta's doing a lot of the right stuff but if we scroll down what i want to look at is the outlook commentary right because in here they ex basically they expect full 2024 total expenses to be between 96 and 98 billion which is insane a lot of that is for uh, reality labs but again if we read a little bit further into here what i want you to read is we anticipate the full year 2024 capital expenditures will be in the range of 38 to 40 billion updated from our prior 37 to 40 as we continue to expect significant capital expenditure growth in 2025. This is what people don't like to see. But again, do you want the company to be just built off meta, WhatsApp, what they already own, or do you want them to keep growing, right? Because this is given uh, th given this along uh, with the back end weighted nature of our 2024 capital expenditures, we expect significant acceleration in infrastructure expense growth next year as we recognize higher growth and depreciation and operating expense of our expanded infrastructure fleet, largely driven by obviously chips looking at getting into nuclear energy these companies are going to become massive utilities of data centers and have you ever seen one these things are like fort knox they never want to show you these they never want to talk about the massive football fuel size warehouses that are literally locked down in ways you couldn't imagine to protect the infrastructure that is the trillion dollar companies today but we got microsoft here as well and microsoft posted again good numbers i don't know if the numbers justify a 36 times multiple but and when you're talking about the kind of revenue and the stability behind this company, whoo, baby, Microsoft is still proving to be a gem. The, the biggest bet you could have made 15 years ago was on the big tech companies. And it still seems to be the bet today. And they are just gobbling up market share. And before I mention gobbling up market share too much, I do want to scroll down and remind you guys the resilience of these balance sheets because they only really get better as we, we move forward, especially when we talk about Google because, you know, Meta's got $256 billion in assets and only 91 in total liability. So keep that in mind, $43 billion in cash. It's just it's it's wild it's wild that these companies could literally just acquire other companies to justify some of their values today but look at the revenue here uh for microsoft i mean 16 percent upside Ooh, baby Ooh, 65 billion disgusting that these companies are still growing like this man it really makes me comfortable buying the SP. I, I mean a lot of us went into this a little bit hesitant but recession what recession these numbers don't even speak don't even don't even mention a recession to me anymore um but if we take a look what's really neat about this is azure uh they're claiming that i think a huge percentage of this the 33 percent growth in their cloud services i think uh double digits were actually uh, a result of ai or so i think i read on uh, i saw in the news article already uh, which is pretty impressive what was really jaw-dropping was xbox is up 61 percent and i've always mentioned my uh, microsoft really seems like a subscription based piston um like a, each one of these subscriptions are like a piston in an engine and they're just running but when some of them start to falter with all that money microsoft has is they're, they're going to pick one that's faltering and try and revitalize it back into double digit growth because the reason that they're up 61 percent in xbox is because as mentioned they started to see it lagger and they did an acquisition they've been acquiring what blizzard they're, they're really building out the xbox side of things again so we're nice to see growth there but whew, man i just can't get over this if we scroll down let's just take a look at the balance sheet here as well i mean we're talking about a company with 523 billion dollars 
against total liabilities of 235. Now, these numbers are great, but just wait. Just wait till we get to uh, to Google here. I want to talk about it because Google posted yesterday and Google just seems to be like always on the forefront of a lot of issues with search and Apple and what's going on with AI and they're dominant. I think they already have like a billion monthly active users on their, their Gemini or whatever, which is great. No problem with that. I think they're going to do just fine. But it's incredible that the value of the stock trades at today, uh, just all things considered here, right? Because the other parts of the business are starting to elapse, which is what we need to happen. Elapse uh, or eclipse the actual you know, advertising business on Google search. Because at the end of the day, when all your money is primarily coming from one aspect of your business, you got to be a little cautious, right? But we're talking about revenue growth. Up 15% back in the double digits, holding double digits strong here to 88 billion, which is beautiful. God awful. I mean, look at the earnings per share from $1.55 to 212 or 30% increase, just really justifying the valuations today. Um, but if we take a look, what's most intriguing to me is here you got so Google search, what I really wanted to look at here. So search and others still make up 49, almost 50 billion. YouTube, I wish was growing a bit quicker, but you know, what are you gonna do about it, right? So total advertising made up $65 billion. But what you want to look at is Google Cloud that went from eight Eight billion to 11.5 so you know it's nice seeing this massive expansion going on i mean it's just it's insane right like these lower end businesses you know kind of reminds me of like apple which i'm excited to see post when they started you know adding the watch and adding the airpods and everyone thought they were going to flop on those and it just became such a a conglomerate of a business that it could just be spun off into its own s p 500 business right so i like looking at other bets i feel like other bets is more related to probably self-driving you got google cloud here going from 266 million to 1.9 billion google services from 24 billion to 31 basically like insane good job i mean come on guys come on like this is this is just ugh. and then i look at reddit and when reddit posted you know I, i'm not like the biggest reddit user and i'm just blown away by like these social media apps and what's happened to them look at this 19 billion dollars the stocks of 133 percent year to date on the back of 68 percent revenue growth right and i think they're still operating at a loss like a pretty large loss but man when you have this kind of growth who just keep pumping money into it and get the growth going i don't know what's causing this for them I'd love to read into this a bit farther. I just wanted to highlight it as like an anecdotal holy shit. <laughs> like, Jesus. And if we take a look at more of the traditional companies even, which is where a lot of my interest has been because the lower half of the market has really helped uh, kind of keep up against the backdrop of lackluster performance out of Microsoft because Microsoft's only up 16.6% this year, right? Like it's not it's not the defining factor to the, the, the S&P sitting up well over 20%. It's kind of like these lower stocks. And I really like seeing how, when I mean lower, I mean, you know, beyond the top 10 holdings like Visa, JP Morgan, some of these stocks, these financial institutions that really are the railway system that are trading at pretty high values, but are they justifying these values? And to some extent, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're talking about double digit growth here. 12% on a company like the size of Visa is incredible that they're still able to do this and double digit net income growth and 17% earnings per share. Like, come on, guys. I mean, I don't have a problem paying a 20 to 30 times multiple on stocks that are growing like this. Like, this is why the S&P, I think, is, you know, it can justify a 20 to 30 times multiple if we're seeing continued growth at this level of scale across the the, the top holdings, right? I mean, it's just... It's disgusting. It's disgusting. I mean, look at payment volume is still growing. Everything about Visa, MasterCard in the onslaught of crypto and, and a lot of disruption that I think is going to happen in this industry. I'm shocked and curious and perplexed at where the evolution of transaction goes because Visa is not the best by any metric. The system is very expensive for smaller businesses. You know, the transactions sometimes don't let you sell things under a dollar because they're so high. But one stock that is not doing that well in the S&P here is um, obviously Starbucks. Still not really able to turn it around as much as we'd like to see, and the stock is faltering on that. And I'm not really sure why the dividend guys are so you know, ready to get on their little soapboxes and become keyboard warriors with a company like this that just is not that appealing considering the competitiveness within coffee. I mean, coffee is such a competitive industry and I always liked it because it's like a drug. I never could buy Starbucks because personally I'd never use it. It's not a company that I get excited about. I never walk in their door unless I have a gift card and I'm like, oh yeah, $5 coffee. Woo, it's so exciting as a passive income, compound investing oriented, frugal, fast track financial independence kind of guy. I mean, like, come on, it's not going to, I'm not going to do it. But when we take a look here, guys, it's just not that appealing to see revenues, you know, dropping here by like 3%. Uh, you know, just really not a great trajectory with operating margins dropping down into 18.7%. This company continues to be on a trajectory of slowing down in here. Net revenues for North America segment decreased 3%, primarily due to a 6% decline in comparable store, store sales. This is the end user voting with their wallet saying, hey, 
I got shit to buy, it ain't gonna be Starbucks, driven by a 10% decline in comparable transactions, partially offset by a 4% increase in average tickets. So they've actually increased the prices to try and offset the, the store user decline, right? So these are not trends you wanna see. I don't know what gets people excited about seeing this kind of trend in their business. Like I said, when you have the backdrop of things like Meta here growing at absurd clips, you know, I mean, these are, if you are a true investor, you're gonna look at balance sheets and you're gonna make your decisions based off those balance sheets because we don't know what happens tomorrow. I can only base tomorrow off what's happening today and Starbucks is not turning around today. Um, and they traded a pretty favorable value for a company that is, you know, continuing to operate at a declining uh, business. So where do you guys think this is going? I'll try to be rude. I know some people love it, but I am just very curious to see a store count increase, uh, you know, overall. Like, how are we increasing store count but seeing a revenue decline? It's a very weird thing to see overall, and especially the, considering the international segment's the one really kind of driving some of the growth here, right? Or at least it's what they're trying to do. Okay, so this is international stores alone, right? Anyways, I'm going to stop rambling. I'll pass the question off to you guys. Um, I'd love to know what you think about all of this in that comment section below.